What's going on trainers is Blandon here and after being off Pokemon Go for a couple of years I came back because I heard about PvP and it was so cool that they implemented Great League because what happens is the Pokemon that you can use to battle are capped at 1500. Uh, so what that means is people like myself with limited time capacity can still put together a team and battle at a slightly more competitive level. And it was so much better when they had the Silk Arena tournament on. And what that basically means is you can build up your player ranking, rate, player rating, and go to regional or even world tournaments. And so we just finished our uh, local Boulder Cup, although we only had 13 players. There were some interesting matchups and there are some key lessons that I learned through the four rounds. Now, I didn't come first, but I was stoked to come third because just coming back for a month, uh, I, I did do a lot of research. So I'd like to share that with you in this video. Enjoy. All right, to kick off with, I'm gonna start off with the team that I use. So I use Double Skarmory, Metachamp, Breloom, and these guys are super strong. Uh, I would say Sky Attack is a must with your Boulder Cup. It's so tanky and it does really well against the fighting Pokemons like Breloom and Metachamp. Breloom I didn't use so much. It was just so weak against Air Slash. Two Air Slash would take about one third of its health. So even if you time a good switch, it still dies pretty quickly. Marsh Stomp was definitely really, really good with the Surf. It charges up as quickly as Mud Bomb, but uh, it can actually take down the Skarmory if you have the right shields. Steelix I used purely just as a Skarmory counter, and you can see the second Skarmory ran the same moveset. Steel Wing, although it does beat the Mirror Match, I didn't find it that useful. But Metachamp was definitely my MVP. Dynamic Punch does neutral damage against Skarmory. Here's my round one. Uh, the first thing I was looking at was, was there any scare for my Skarmory? It, it, besides Makago, I'm not too scared of anything else. Hitmonchan, if we trade shields, it could actually take it down. Um, so Hitmonchan wasn't too much of a problem. So here's round one. As you can see, my opponent thought I was going to start with a Skarmory, with double Skarmory, and it actually worked. So. He switched his Pokemon out and it was sort of over from there because I'm able to switch out the counter to counter whatever he puts out. So Steelix is a really good matchup against Skarmory. It shouldn't lose. Uh, the million tests is just, yeah, so tanky. Um, the not effective damage is not going to take it down at all. So I'm just getting by with my Crunch uh, there and taking down the Skarmory. Puts out Metachamp. Uh, and I'll just let the Steelix go and in comes Skarmory, he's going to switch. So I switch into Metachamp, super effective damage and it should be over from there. As you can see, we're trading shields. But a key lesson here is the starting Pokemon is so important. So you want to start off with the thing that is probably not double weakness because it's quite risky because you could end up losing the match straight away if you take a wrong guess. So Skarmory definitely will take out the meta champ. And here comes round two. Now I didn't get the footage but we were trading Marsh Stomp and uh, Xlure actually told me afterwards he's like oh man I should have used Totara I knew you were going to use Marsh Stomp I just didn't trust my instinct. But yeah, I mean, Marsh Stomp, it was whoever gets the Mud Bomb last uh, wins, pretty much. Because you have a huge advantage after that. And as you can see, Hitmonchan, although it does um, super effective damage, it's so easy for Skarmory just to use one Sky Attack to take out the Hitmonchan. But in this case, I didn't have enough health and uh, he, he still have a shield, but because I still have the Metachamp, uh, I was able to take out the Hitmonchan. And that concludes our round. So my second round, I was paired with Pandem, a slightly more casual player, as you can see in her lineup. Uh, some of her Pokemon are not maxed out. And yeah, most of them only had one charge move. So 
I knew she was kind of bored because she had a second phone and she was kind of catching Pokemon on her second phone and I encouraged her to sort of do a little bit more research around a metagame and you know if she needed practice she can jump on uh, the Facebook group chats and you know get some people to practice with her. I mean she was level 40 so she definitely had a passion for the game but you can see Skarmory just going to chomp through everything so I'm just going to show one of these match because the second round is pretty much the same. As you can see the Bulldoze just doesn't do very effective damage to Skarmory. But it, it was still quite tanky, um, you know, it still take out one Skarmory and Metachamp versus Metachamp, I mean I didn't really end up using my shields. Forest just was an interesting choice, but in this Boulder Cup, I don't think it does effective damage against much. And yeah, I just wouldn't use Forest just, but you can see Brandon Tan using Forest just a lot in his videos. In general, it is a good tank, but for this Boulder Cup, probably not a good choice. There'll be definitely better members on your team. So in round three versus Draggy, it was interesting because the, her lineup is actually quite strong. Uh, again, I'm just looking for anything that's going to take out my Skarmory. Obviously, she's got Steelix, she's definitely ready. But I'm thinking of using Skarmory because if he, if she started with Steelix, it would be quite risky because if she ran into Metachamp, does super effective damage. And guess what? She starts off with Steelix, so it's already a bad matchup to begin with. So I'm just thinking about charging up my move and then switching so that's a very very key lesson I learned in this tournament it's actually a really powerful move um, and you can see even though Skarmory switched out but the dynamic punch just does so much damage and I think she should have shield but she didn't and I was lucky that she didn't because yeah it, it allowed me to take down quite a bit of health through the Skarmory so you can see uh, Metachamp actually can stand up against Skarmory even though it's taking effective damage but it might be running Steel Wing so that's why it probably lasted that long but um, again she didn't have much uh, except for that Steelix to match up with the Metachamp so I left it for super effective damage but yeah I mean over here you can see Sky Attack straight away when it comes out it can just take down the Breedlim straight away um, so I'm quite comfortable to take on Steelix at this stage uh, with just a little bit of health left. So I think um, in this matchup she could have done the switches better uh, because she actually had the upper hand to begin with. And at this point of the tournament I wish I started with Marsh Stomp more, more often because it only takes double effective damage against Breloom and most Breloom are probably going to run counter so in the beginning you can probably load up one of your move before you switch to Skarmory and do, do two air slash and it'll probably take one third of the Breloom's health before they can switch to something else so it's actually quite good um, and you can see the Surf does quite a bit of damage uh, and it's just trading shields um, but yeah over here she switched to Breloom I think it wasn't the right play uh, and she did say it was a mistake but that mistakes sort of cost her one Pokemon straight away because I'm able to switch to Skarmory and it takes like two three hits to take down a Breloom. Uh, over here I'm thinking well I still got three so I just leave the Skarmory out uh, plus I actually can't switch at the moment so I'm just doing as much damage as I can with the Skarmory uh, and hopefully I can get a Metachamp out but actually it didn't matter because both of them would do super effective damage against. I just was trying to think about what was the third Pokemon that they had. <laughs> and I completely forgotten that Marsh Tom didn't have much health. But uh, Metachamp should be able to take down the last Pokemon, I hope. Uh, but in this scenario, it, I almost died. Uh, but yeah, Dynamic Punch is just too good. So round 4 was my toughest match because this guy came second and he actually made really good decisions uh, and the lesson I learned here is even though you might start off with a Pokemon that is uh, taking 
super effective damage it's really important just to load up its move before you switch it out because uh, you might as well charge up one of your move sets. Uh, I kind of cheated with this video because during the actual match we actually had four I think it was actually five rounds because we lagged out so many times because we timed the switch quite well um, but I didn't record the actual match because it was kind of getting frustrating but uh, after the tournament I asked him to actually do a rematch with the same lineups and I was able to win both of them um, and it was really really close matchup in the actual tournament as well so you will be able to see so the first match I just couldn't imagine him using Magneton and he did it was a very bad matchup for me but um, it was important just to try and get the sky attack up and then switch out because if I switch to Metachamp as you can see it does neutral damage um, I'm able to load up the dynamic punch before they get the Skarmory out so it's not too bad but I'm probably taking quite a bit of damage from the air slash uh, but yeah dynamic punch is definitely gonna bait those shields out or otherwise it's gonna take the Skarmory down yeah so you we almost got there but with the sky attack um, it's it's always a trading with the Skarmory and I'm hoping to take it down before it can get another sky attack off but obviously it's already loaded up and here I'm just saving my move I'm not using the sky attack uh, and then switch out Magneton and I'm able to just do a quick switch as you can see it lagged there uh, but it was a timely switch for the discharge uh, and then now we're just sort of trading movesets uh, slight advantage I guess because I've already loaded up one surf and he's got no more shields left so this should take it down yes and then lastly I just need to try and get a mud bomb off but I didn't and I had to get a sky attack and it was just enough to finish the matchup so it was super close and it was very close in the actual matchup as well now this one here Marshom against Marshom again is whoever get the last uh, mud bomb or surf wins because if you trade shields and then the, the first person that gets that next mud bomb is have having a slight advantage but you can see in the beginning of the match I, I kind of had like one move behind him uh, so there's no way that my marsh is going to be able to take him out so we're trading shields uh, yeah but the marsh is surprisingly good against so many things it can take out a skarmory it's good against uh, Skarmory counters um, and it's only taking super effective against Breloom which most people are not playing um, well so here you can see dynamic punch is just so good uh, although it's taking super effective damage now we're sort of trading sky attacks here I switched out But I reflected on this match. I think I should have saved that dynamic punch and then just, you know, get the Skarmory out slightly earlier uh, and then come back with double dynamic punch as a surprise. But here it's so close because it was able to take, take me out, but I know it doesn't have any charge moves. So I should be able to get one more charge move up before, but that's not what happened. <laughs> concludes our video so hopefully you saw something interesting for your Boulder Cup and the three key lessons that I learned is number one uh, definitely try and load up your charge move before you switch uh, with the exception if you're running Breloom against a Skarmory you probably won't be able to switch or even get a charge move off because it's just so weak against it now second I think Marsh Stomp is definitely a very very good starter and it should probably start maybe two thirds of your matches because um, if even if you have to face a Breloom, it probably runs counter. And what that basically means is you'll be able to at least load up your move before you switch to your Skarmory, get a couple of Air Slash off, and you'll pretty much take half of the uh, Breloom's health down. So it's not so bad. And lastly, I would definitely think about your lineup and the counters for it. So what do I mean? If you've got a Steelix and it's weak against Metachamp and Marsh Tom, then you definitely want to have an automatic switch that you already have in mind. So for example, you would switch to a Skarmory 
uh, and then who would cover for Skarmory? It's, it's weak against Magneton and Steelix. You want to switch out, say, Metachamp straight away. And you want to just practice those before the tournament because during the tournament, uh, you don't have much time to think. And if you set those counters up straight away, it's kind of like an automatic switch for you. So you won't do the wrong switch because during practice, I did a lot of wrong switch, and um, but it worked out well for me to tournament. So I was quite stoked with my result. Uh, in the last match, it, there was a couple of flaggy matches, but yeah, I mean, it was a close matchup. So definitely, uh, pretty happy with the results. Now lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. It would be really encouraging and I love to put more content together for you. I've also got Hazard, you can see he's number one in our chart. Uh, I've got his recording of his final matchups and I'm going to take you guys through that as well, hopefully by the end of this week. So stay tuned.